Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast, all about reinventing your health with safer, cheaper, more effective natural solutions and powerful lifestyle changes so that you become the CEO of your health. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder. You know, we hear a lot about menopause, but what about the years leading up to it? Why aren't we talking about the four to 10 plus years of transition known as perimenopause? You know, the roller coaster ride leading up to menopause that can actually feel like menopause, especially towards the end. Because menopause is simply that defining moment when you don't have a period for a full year. Now for many women, perimenopause, especially the last two to four years leading up to menopause are the most challenging because symptoms like unexplained weight gain, extreme fatigue, endless sleepless nights, hot flashes and night sweats, migraines, anxiety, unexplained mood swings, brain fog, and heavy bleeding can hit you all at once. This number of disruptive hormonal symptoms can feel like you got hit by a Mack truck with no end in sight. It can feel beyond discouraging when you feel like you don't have a real viable solution to addressing most of these issues, especially when they come on and compound all at once. Now, most doctors are going to offer you hormonal birth control or hormone replacement therapy, maybe a mood altering drug like an anti-anxiety prescription like Xanax. And these solutions don't address most of the issues on the list that I just gave you. Maybe they address a couple of them. Now, the best way to navigate this big transition from being fertile and having a menstrual cycle to menopause is understanding what is going on and making a plan to support your body throughout, literally from the beginning or at any stage that you're at. Now, do you want the good news? Because there is so much more we can do and there are so many side benefits to making some simple changes. And yes, I will be sharing these recommendations today and they are not found in a cream or a pill bottle. Now I want you to know that although your body is indeed changing, there are adjustments that you can make to significantly ease the transition through perimenopause that have you feeling like you are entering into a new beginning and not just finishing out the end of something. A couple of things to note that are very important. First thing, you gotta wanna embrace the changes and be open to making adjustments to your body and your health. The second thing, you gotta decide that you are worthy of focusing on you because implementing these changes to support your body will take some time and a little bit of work but I promise the payoff is worth it. Not only during these transitional years of perimenopause, but in the many years to come, well after menopause. That's where so much of the magic happens for many of us in our careers, in our lives, in our families, is literally in these magic years, perimenopause, menopause, and beyond. So as long as you are fully committed to you and optimizing your health with a few amazing changes, Let's dive into the stages of perimenopause so that you know what's going on and you can make a plan to navigate this incredible transition with ease and grace. Now, before I go into the phases and offer my recommendations, I always want you to feel like you know what's exactly going on in your body and have a deeper understanding of which hormones could be imbalanced. Today, we're going to be talking about progesterone and estrogen, but there are a lot of other hormones that I speak to in this podcast and that we know lend to one another. So I want to invite you to take my hormone quiz that looks at the biggest hormone players. So if you are still cycling, and especially in perimenopause, this quick quiz will give you a lot of insight. I will have the show notes for this episode, which is 243, or you can simply go to drmarisa.com, that's D-R-M-A-R-I-Z-A.com slash hormone quiz. Now a quick note, if you have already gone through menopause, what this quiz is going to tell you is that estrogen and progesterone levels are low because naturally they are. That's what ends up happening in menopause. Our progesterone and estrogen levels get very low, but this quiz can lend to other hormonal imbalances. So just a heads up, 
I've got a lot of emails from women in menopause who are like, yes, I have low hormones in this department, and that's what should be showing up on this quiz. Okay, now that you have access to the hormone quiz, I recommend taking it. But let's talk about hormones and really the lowdown when it comes to perimenopause because there is a lot of shifting in this transitional period that we need to know and be prepared for. So perimenopause can technically start as early as 35 or 10 plus years before menopause depending on who you ask and honestly depending on the person. Every one of us are unique. It just really depends on what's going on with our bodies. And it's defined as the slow transitional decline of your ovaries as a player in your endocrine system, accompanying that slow decline of fertility that ultimately speeds up in our mid-40s. Also, the number and quality of egg follicles will be diminishing, causing a decline in estrogen production and fewer ovulation. So that's what's going to be happening during the transition of perimenopause. This is what's naturally designed to happen in the body. It's just a matter of mitigating the shifts in these hormones that we want to be the most mindful of. Now, as a result, by our mid to late 40s, cycle length and menstrual flow may vary wildly period to period, and periods can become very irregular to the point where you may not have a period one month and then you may have an extended period the next month. Now, estrogen is going to be dropping precipitously some months and then spike super crazy high other months. Over time, our pituitary gland, which is a part of the hypothalamus in the limbic brain, that pituitary gland is going to drive a pituitary-driven hormone called follicular stimulating hormone. And when these levels drive up high, it's in vain to attempt to prod the ovaries into producing more estrogen and to continue to ovulate. And that's where those swings are coming from. Some months, the pituitary gland is sending follicular stimulating hormone to the ovaries. Some months, the ovaries are like, okay, okay, let's surge estrogen levels. And that ultimately leads to heavy periods and crazy PMS symptoms. And then other months, your pituitary gland is going to send a lot of follicular stimulating hormone and your ovaries are going to be like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to raise any estrogen levels. And those will be the months where your periods are very scant and consistently irregular. So just a heads up, that's kind of what's going on. It's coming from the brain, trying to prod the ovaries to keep producing as many eggs as possible till the very end. So now what's really interesting about this period is now that many women are delaying childbirth, including myself, I'm recording this 36 weeks pregnant, many women are hitting the double whammy of trying to conceive while dealing with perimenopause symptoms. And literally my hand is raised up because I definitely started experiencing perimenopausal symptoms in my late 30s got pregnant at 40, and have felt massive shifts by being pregnant and in perimenopause at the same time. But the cool thing is, is it's totally doable, and I feel like I've been navigating it pretty well throughout. And what's really fascinating, and I'll talk about this in just a second, is that when I was trying to conceive, one of the issues that happens in perimenopause is lower than normal progesterone levels. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. And so I ended up having to supplement with progesterone in order to get pregnant because it just wasn't high enough. So just something to think about. These all plays a role depending on whatever journey you're in. And Along with all of this, many other women are experiencing disruptive perimenopausal symptoms while raising young children or children of any age. So now that I've kind of painted the picture of what is going on, I want to just lay the groundwork for the first phase of perimenopause which again can start as early as our mid to late 30s. And what happens in this first phase of perimenopause, really driven by lifestyle techniques or our lifestyle habits in our 20s and our 30s, like things just start to catch up with us. And one of the results of environmental factors catching up with us, stressors, poor diet, too much drinking, environmental toxins, gut issues, all of that ends up having an impact on progesterone levels. And progesterone levels in the second phase of your cycle will begin to drop. It's the first hormone to decline before estrogen, 
And that's why we tend to see women in early perimenopause experiencing things like mood swings, feeling overwhelmed, especially in the afternoon, sleep issues at night, mental chatter before going to bed, anxiety, even depression, and inconsistent periods and PMS symptoms. Now, progesterone makes it such an incredible hormone. It's a very calming hormone, and having less of it isn't doing us any favors. I remember starting to experience low progesterone levels in probably 36 years old, and it was no fun. I also have looked at hundreds of labs from women in their 30s and their 40s, and progesterone is almost always lower than I expect it to be on those labs. Although I'm never surprised when I see low progesterone levels in women 35 and older. And it's no wonder. We are struggling with stress. We are crazy busy, busier than ever. And oftentimes we're just not getting enough of the right nutrients to actually make progesterone. Because at the end of the day, progesterone is a hormone that requires building blocks to actually make and produce it. And if we don't have those building blocks in place, we're just simply not going to make it. And if we're struggling with ovulation for any of the other reasons that I mentioned, stress, environmental toxins, gut issues, all of those things, if we're not ovulating and having the main event, that little corpus luteum after ovulation isn't going to crank enough progesterone for us to really feel it and make a difference. So it is no wonder why we're seeing so many people struggle In their late 30s to 40s, it's because we have this major progesterone crash that's happening. Now, when I think about progesterone, I think about it as the hormone that we often take for granted. And honestly, I didn't know how much it was saving me until it started to dip. So if you relate to any of those symptoms that I mentioned, it's always worth looking to see where your progesterone levels are at. Just note that when you're measuring progesterone, I prefer you measure on a Dutch test. And I also prefer that you measure it when it's at its highest. And that's typically seven days from your menstrual cycle, which if you're cycling on 28 days, that's usually day 20 or 21. So note that there's a very specific time to actually check progesterone levels to see if you have an adequate amount of progesterone. If you're checking progesterone in the first part of your cycle, you're not going to see any progesterone there because that's not when we create progesterone. So just a heads up. So often I see that patients in my community have their hormones checked, but not checked at the right time. So just note that we peak progesterone day 20 or 21 of our cycle. If you're cycling at 28 days, clearly it's always seven days before the start of your menstrual period. So just a heads up there. Okay. Let's talk about the second phase of perimenopause. Now, the thing about the first phase, before I move on to the second phase, is that the first phase can feel very behind the scenes. Like, you may not even know what's happening. Just gradual shifts are happening. Like, maybe you're waking up a little bit tired. Maybe you're dealing with some brain fog. Maybe you've got a little bit more worry or anxiousness, or you're checking off to-do lists at night before going to bed, and you can't seem to wind down. Or maybe your cycle is a little bit wonky, you're dealing with some PMS symptoms. All of that can be, for so many of us, what we consider to be par for the course. But really, those are the first kind of stages, that first phase of perimenopause. And again, depending on how well we've taken care of ourselves in our 20s and our early 30s, can really dictate how soon this phase comes into play for us. Now, the second phase of perimenopause towards our mid 40s and then from mid 40s until we hit menopause and the average age for natural menopause is 51 or 52 years old. So mid 40s to about 51 years old, we're stepping into the next level, the next phase of perimenopause. And the reason why this is another phase, right? So precipitously progesterone has been dropping and we've noticed that. It's been affecting our mood, it's affecting our stress levels, it's affecting our sleep, it's affecting our PMS symptoms, it's affecting our cravings. But now we've got another player, another massive hormone player running the show, and that is estrogen. So estrogen begins to fluctuate wildly as the ovaries begin to slack off and the brain keeps pushing those ovaries to work harder through that follicular stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. Meanwhile, we have missed ovulation We have lower egg quality, meaning less progesterone is being made to balance out estrogen. 
And given that this crazy roller coaster ride of estrogen um, that's going up and down, up and down, and a steady decline of progesterone as your body is preparing for menopause, you are almost guaranteed to be dealing with estrogen dominance and a lot of symptoms associated with estrogen dominance. Also, you will notice that your menstrual cycle is getting shorter. What was normally a 28 or 29 or 30 day cycle is now 26, 25 or 24 days. And if you're tracking your cycle, which I highly, highly recommend that you do at all phases of your life, you will actually see your cycle getting shorter and shorter, which really kind of proves that all of this is under works and under play. So if you're wondering what is going on with my body, what's going on with my cycle, most likely you're on the later stages of perimenopause. Now, there's also going to be months, as I mentioned earlier, where you don't have a period at all because your ovaries simply just didn't want to crank out more estrogen. And then there's going to be other months where your ovaries try to make up for it and they crank out way too much estrogen. So you have this crazy heavy period, like it feels like you're hemorrhaging for eight plus days and it's extremely uncomfortable, it's extremely scary, and it can also lead to anemia. So taking you know, B12, B9, iron, these are gonna be super, super important. Checking ferritin levels are gonna also be important because we really wanna keep an eye on where your blood levels, where your iron levels are to guarantee that you're not in and having an anemic state. I know my mom, she had really severe heavy periods because of estrogen dominance, and she was definitely dipping into having anemia herself. So again, something to be looking out for. Now this has everything to do with estrogen levels being low one month and then your body trying to make up for it the next month. Now estrogen dominance is simply having more estrogen than your body's ability to produce progesterone to counteract it or your body's ability to actually break down the estrogen. You just have way too much estrogen in the system. Now, you can also have low estrogen on a hormone test and still be estrogen dominant because it's about the ratio of estrogen to progesterone. So you could have like zero progesterone and have low estrogen and still have estrogen dominance because there's no progesterone to counteract this really critical and very powerful hormone inside of the body. Estrogen is such a proliferative hormone. It's a growth hormone, hence the heavy bleeding. So we want to just be mindful that progesterone Progesterone can really be the game change for helping to counteract and balance things in your body. And I'm going to get to how to do that in just a minute. Now, estrogen dominance can be caused by several different factors, no surprise there, like declining progesterone levels, a sluggish liver, stress, genetic predisposition, gut and thyroid issues. All of these things can lead to estrogen dominance. And here are some common issues caused by estrogen dominance during perimenopause. So heavy bleeding, as we mentioned before, accompanied by an increased risk of fibroids and polyps in the uterus and in the cervix, severe PMS symptoms, brain fog, sleep issues, hot flashes and night sweats, mood swings, migraines, stubborn weight on the hips and thighs, fibrous tender breasts, and also maybe pain and discomfort, bloating, gas in the abdominal area. Now the good news is, is that we have a lot more control over our hormones and how our hormones transition than you might think. Like even though I'm painting the picture of what's going on, there is some things that we can do to make sure that this transition does not feel like the crazy roller coaster ride that I have been painting for you. Although I know that for some people that's just exactly how it feels. So once you identify the root cause of your estrogen dominance or what's going on with perimenopause, there are some simple steps that you can take to reduce this. Supporting liver detoxification, loving up on your gut microbiome and your gut health, loving up on your thyroid. These are all essential components to finding relief. And then also just quelling inflammation and stabilizing blood sugar levels. Those are gonna be huge hitters here because those two have major levers to pull when it comes to balancing out progesterone and estrogen. Now I wanna just talk a little bit about severe PMS. So let me just paint the picture, right? You're feeling bloated, you're stressed out, your mood feels unpredictable. 
your partner, or honestly anyone in your family walks in the room, takes one look at you, and turns right around because they don't want to confront the dragon. You're not sleeping well, you have midday sugar cravings, and you just don't feel like yourself. Plus the bloating, the pain, the discomfort, all that that just wrapped into that perimenopause and crazy PMS bow. I know for me, this was my life. So I can completely relate if you're struggling with PMS symptoms about a week before your period, especially when your period is inconsistent and you are 35 and older. And I know that you're wondering, will it all ever equalize? Will it all ever get better? And here's the deal. Yes, we can absolutely address the PMS symptoms no matter where you are in your world. One of my best friends, Nicole Jardim, who's been on this podcast many times, she has an entire book called Fix Your Period. And it's literally addressing a lot of this symptomology and getting to the root cause of what's going on. As I mentioned before, estrogen is a big time stimulator and progesterone promotes calm. And when we find them out of balance, it oftentimes has everything to do with the stress response system. So one of the biggest levers to pull when it comes to severe PMS is looking at our stress levels, looking at things that we can do to support our stress response system so that we can lessen some of this imbalance that's happening when we're dealing with PMS. Now, let me say this out of the gate. This will end once you reach menopause and your hormones level out. PMS will not continue when your periods cease permanently. But I wanna talk about what you can do today. First, I want you to know that extra grace is required right now and you deserve all the extra grace. Next, lifestyle habits are your best friend. This is how we're gonna move the needle. And I've got some other levers to pull, but let's focus on lifestyle for just a moment. So when it comes to lifestyle, the first lever I like to pull is the nutrition lever. I wanna get inflammation under control because inflammation has such a massive impact on your reproductive system, especially your hormones, estrogen, and progesterone. So avoiding things like dairy, gluten, high amounts of caffeine, I'm not taking away caffeine fully, but high amounts of caffeine, sugar, and alcohol can help ease PMS symptoms because they reduce inflammation, especially if you're dealing with an inflammatory histamine response in your body that triggers worse symptoms. So again, we want to get, we want to quell the fire. We want to quell the inflammation. We do that by shifting the way that we eat and healing our gut. Next, it's all about addressing the stress The stress monster, I know, we sometimes don't even know it's there. But if you do or don't know it's there, it's really just about cultivating a couple simple rituals in your day to reduce the amount of stress that your body is going through and reduce the amount of stress response mode that is driving cortisol and insulin to deregulate, which have compounding impact on your reproductive system and your cycle. So three rituals that I personally love is one, doing a five minute meditation. It's super easy, there's apps for that. I personally love a more extended meditation. I love Ziva meditation personally, and I do that once or twice a day. 60 seconds of deep breathing along with your favorite essential oil, literally 60 seconds. And you can literally program this into your phone so that a little chime goes off and you do the deep breath with the oils, whatever oil you love and just watch your whole system, your body and your muscles just kind of melt into a stress-free zone. And then the last one is just taking a walk outside in nature for 10 minutes. These are all so simple to do. And mind you, there are so many more. I talk about rituals and self-care all the time on the podcast. I could name another 20 of these. But the point is, is that you are making time out of your day to reset your stress response system so that your body isn't constantly being bombarded with SOS signals and symptoms. Okay, next is we've got to address the critical nutrient deficiencies due to hormone fluctuations, environmental toxins, stress, and whatever you're just not getting from food. Because even if you're full vegan and you're eating tons of veggies every day, we're still nutrient deficient. We burn through so many key vitamins and minerals at a rapid speed when we are crazy busy and we even have just low levels of stress. So I promise every woman I ever meet, 
is burning through their supplement storage facility inside of their body, (laughs) mostly in their liver, much faster than they could ever imagine. And most of us are just not getting enough of the nutrients to begin with. This was a huge issue for me. And I'll tell you what, if there was a massive game-changing shift for me, it was always nutrition. It was always having self-care rituals in place. That was such a big one for me. And it was massive supplementation. Those were the big three levers that I had to pull in order to get myself out of perimenopause hell. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my favorite supplements that I think every woman should take in just a second to support your body's hormone balance and to help support perimenopause. So these are the must-have supplements I think are necessary for perimenopause periods, PMS, and just overall all of the symptoms that I mentioned way earlier on. So number one is magnesium glycinate. Now magnesium glycinate is for hot flashes, night sweats, sleep, hormone regulation, mood support, headaches, cravings, and it can help you handle stress or at least help mitochondria make what it needs even if they're stressed. I recommend 300 to 600 milligrams at night before bed. I personally take around 400 milligrams before bed and it has changed my life. When I pair magnesium glycinate, I love to pair it with Pharma GABA, which is basically a GABA, which is a neurotransmitter that helps calm the brain especially during perimenopause when progesterone levels are crashing for so many of us. Magnesium glycinate with Pharmagaba and taurine are the game change. I recommend adding these as well and taking them before bed with magnesium glycinate. The reason why magnesium glycinate is because glycine is also a very calming amino acid like taurine. So I want you to take magnesium glycinate. Unless you're dealing with constipation, you may want to consider doing magnesium citrate. Now, as I mentioned before, magnesium is especially great with dealing with sleep issues, mental chatter, and anxiety. What's super important to me is even considering getting PharmaGaba or some type of GABA supplement. Right now, I carry a PharmaGaba chewable that is literally fast acting, like it works like that. And it's in my Common Restore blend. And then I also have my magnesium restore, which is a magnesium glycinate. So if you can just get the common restore supplement and the magnesium restore, you're set for a lot of what you're lacking with progesterone levels. Next, the third supplement I recommend is methylated B-complex vitamins. Super incredible for radically reducing bloating, improving mood, easing breast tenderness while energizing your cells to combat fatigue. Plus, let's not even get into liver detoxification pathways, hormone pathways, supporting your thyroid. I mean, there's so many ways in which activated B vitamins are just changing the game, your brain function, all of it. Those are just a couple of the heavy hitters when it comes to dealing with symptomology. And most of us are deficient in magnesium and definitely deficient in B vitamins. Now, because I know how important these are, and I want to make sure you aren't wasting your time and your money on low quality supplements, because a lot of crappy supplements out there, I've included these, the Magnesium Restore, the Common Restore, which is the chewable Pharma GABA, and the Activated B Complete Vitamins. They're all in my Essentially Whole supplement line. These are three of my best sellers because so many women that I'm taking care of are dealing with these perimenopausal symptoms. I will have the link for all three of these supplements in the show notes for episode 243 in case you want to check it out. And I bundle up Magnesium Restore and the Activated B Complete, and they're on sale. So just in case you wanted to save money, two of those supplements are bundled together and have a discounted price on them as well. Okay, other powerful supplements to be taking to add to your arsenal. Iron, we talked about this, especially if you're experiencing heavy bleeding. I wanna make sure that you are taking a chelated iron supplement. I take iron every single day personally because I've had low iron issues myself. And so just a heads up, something to look at on your labs, look at ferritin levels and see where your iron is at. Next is chaseberry or Vitex. Now I love chaseberry. 
It is a well-recognized herbal supplement to treat menstrual issues and PMS symptoms. You want to be taking it. It can help to increase progesterone levels. And you want to be taking it during the second part of your cycle. So after you ovulate, you want to be taking Chase Berry. I also carry Chase Berry in a really great functional amount in my hormone balance blend. Next is dried ginger root in a capsule twice a day will calm down the heavy bleeding and reduce inflammation and bloating. Vitamin C, we all know is a natural anti-inflammatory, helps to ease heavy bleeding and pain that comes along with it. It's also great for absorbing iron and it's phenomenal for liver detoxification and immune system support. I mean, there's so many benefits to taking vitamin C every single day. And a lot of us just aren't getting enough of that as well. Next is DIM. Now, this is a compound found in cruciferous vegetables that shows great promise for its ability to increase the body's production of healthy estrogen levels while decreasing any bad estrogen because there's a lot of not so good estrogen that can be floating around the body. Now, DIM alleviates symptoms of PMS and can help reduce heavy bleeding because it's a phytonutrient and it has a lot of antioxidant compounds. It is also inside of my hormone balance blend with Chase Berry. And then lastly, I think super, super important is probiotics and digestive enzymes. Supporting your microbiome is an essential part in maintaining a healthy relationship between estrogen and progesterone inside of your body and helping to normalize your menstrual cycle. Having a healthy gut ensures excess estrogen is expelled from the body, opposed to being reabsorbed, leading you to be more estrogen dominant. And the best way to keep your gut thriving is by consuming high quality probiotics. So personally, I love Just Thrive probiotics or Megaspore probiotics, but totally up to you what you feel is right for you. And then last but not least, This is probably one of the greatest discoveries and ways in which to manage perimenopause and even menopause, and that is natural progesterone because it can ease some of the worst symptoms of perimenopause, especially the mood swings, the crazy sleep issues, the PMS symptoms, the heavy periods, the migraines, the bloating. I mean, so many of the most disruptive perimenopause symptoms can literally be addressed with natural progesterone. So let me count the ways that natural progesterone can be your saving grace. One, it makes periods lighter. So progesterone can be used together with like turmeric and other treatments, kind of like what I talked about, the ginger root, to relieve crazy heavy periods of perimenopause. It relieves hot flashes and night sweats, although it pairs beautifully with magnesium glycinate to do that. Progesterone works best in combination with magnesium glycinate and pharmagaba. It improves mood and sleep because progesterone soothes the GABA receptors in the brain. It's like, it's just a natural sleep aid. I love it. Again, paired beautifully with magnesium glycinate and pharmagaba. It reduces migraines and headaches along with tender breast tissue due to addressing the estrogen dominance concern. It improves insulin sensitivity and stabilizes blood sugar levels, which is a such a big win. And it stabilizes the HPA access, known as the stress response system, improves your ability to cope with stress. Huge, huge wins. Now, what I recommend is to take progesterone one or two ways. You can either take it orally or in a serum. Now, I prefer a serum because it is less invasive. You don't have to get a prescription for it. And it absorbs very quickly and it works very quickly. So I recently started carrying my Progest Restore, which is a natural progesterone serum. And what I love so much about this progesterone serum is that it personally helped me to get pregnant at the age of 40. It contains 20 milligrams of bioidentical progesterone in each one mil serving and consists of super micronized form of natural progesterone that facilitates better absorption than conventional creams on the market. Now, I recommend applying one mil one to two times a day to smooth skin areas like the wrist, inner arms, thighs, throat, neck, abdominal area, or chest. Honestly, I just rub it into my inner arms and pretty much done with it. Bioidentical progesterone can alleviate perimenopausal symptoms and estrogen dominance. It is neuro, breast, and bone protective, which is super important compared to synthetic progesterone like progestins or hormonal birth control. These are not protective. They're not neuro, bone, or breast protective at all. Synthetic progesterone can be quite dangerous with unwanted side effects. 
Now, when you pair natural progesterone with the lifestyle changes that I recommended above today, you will find that many of your perimenopausal symptoms will simply disappear, literally. And it will feel so much easier to handle what life is throwing at you as you approach menopause. And what I love so much is that these recommendations will also set you up for success with menopause and beyond, which to me really matters. It isn't just about navigating perimenopause and your 40s. It's about living your best life all of the time and feeling great in your body and doing the things that you love. And here's the thing is we do the best when we are feeling healthy and energized. And you deserve to get to feel that way and to do your best and to live your best all the time. Now, I absolutely know that when we take control of our health and our healing journey and pull the right levers, the levers that I spoke to today, these aren't the hardest levers, but the right ones that I mentioned earlier and focus on our health as a priority, healing miracles will 100% happen. I know because I've been there more than once myself and I know it's 100% possible to feel amazing and have enough energy to show up in the morning for everyone and throughout the day, and to feel like you have the capacity to live your mission without compromise. Now, with all of that said, I know how important it can be to really identify if there are other hormones at play for any symptoms you may experience. So I recommend you go and check out my hormone quiz. It will be in the show notes, or just go to drmarisa.com slash hormone quiz. I will also have the links to the supplements I mentioned inside of the show notes. So if you know you are struggling with some of those areas or you just know you've got nutrient deficiencies like so many of us do, it's worth starting to take those supplements and begin to feel the shifts that happen when we've got the right things inside of our body. Now, I am also beyond excited for you to get your hands on my new book that's going to get released in the spring of next year. Now, what this book is, is it's designed to give you more detail on all of this that I talked about today and provide detailed protocols on the biggest symptoms that you are struggling with in perimenopause and menopause. Now, it took me two years to write this book and perfect it, and I can't wait till it's available to you. It will come out in April of 2021, so we have a couple more months to go. But until then, I will keep showing up on this podcast. I have an incredible summit coming up in February, lots of great resources that I will keep pouring into you so that you feel just fully prepared to navigate this transitional period and beyond. Now, thank you so much for stopping by and listening into the Essentially You podcast. I know today was a mouthful, but I hope that you walk away from this episode one, understanding what's going on with your body, especially the two big phases of perimenopause, two, having lifestyle recommendations that you can begin to easily implement. And three, knowing the why of what's going on. Because once we know what is going on with our bodies, we can make a plan to begin to shift the way that our bodies are functioning. Now on this next episode, speaking of how the body's functioning and how we can work with it, I am bringing on Dr. Stephanie Estima, one of my besties, on how to eat and train according to your menstrual cycle. Now, she's going to be touching upon perimenopause as well. So this is such a great episode to listen to after this one. And that will go live next Tuesday. So you're not going to want to miss it. Until then, have an amazing week. Have an incredible fall. Stay healthy.